because honestly, seeing you guys is the best part of this job, the little interactions we have. And that's what I miss most about being not at school. When I was at school, we could high five and bunny ear and have a great old time. But alas, it's so hard to do. So hard to do. Anyways, we left off last time. Muhammad had received a vision in the caves, bummed out about the disparity between rich and poor. So this is what's going to happen. Muhammad said the leaders of Maka were part of the problem. He said they were too worried about being wealthy. They're too worried about business and fame and how your social standing. They said, we need to go back to the old ways where we honored our families. We need to go be fair and stop being dishonest in business. Mia has to stop going and saying she's going to sell a pound of sugar and only giving 14 ounces of sugar because she puts her finger on the scales. We need to help those that are in need. I mean, really, when you think about it, when he's like, we need to be nicer to people. We need to help people. Like, no one's going to say, oh, no, we should not be. But yet some people were. So Muhammad said his vision in the cave, he was visited by an angel, the angel Gabriel. This is a, a famous angel. We've seen him in a lot of things uh, for Judaism and Christianity. And the angel told him that you must preach Islam, which means submission to Allah, the will of Allah. Now, one of the things that we need to get straight, because this is um, a big misconception, and oh yeah, my disclaimer, we're speaking about a world religion, I'm not telling you what to believe, I'm talking about the history of it, this is a personal thing between you, and because of, you're so young, your family with it, you're free to believe what you want, but we need to understand other people, because this is a huge faith for millions of people. Anyways, one of the things that happen is um, people say, oh, well, Muslims worship Allah. Well, Allah is just the Arabic word for God. So just like how like Christians and Jews would say God. Well, Jews would typically say something like Yahweh instead, and some Christians as well. But it's the same thing. All right. So like people try to go and make these differences and try to have problems with it. But it's just Allah is their word for God. If you were a Christian and you were spoke Arabic, you would say Allah for God as well. So anyways, so Islam means surrendering to the will of Allah. And um, this angel told him to preach it. In fact, the story at this point was that Muhammad um, couldn't write and that um, the angel um, made him write the Quran down and like would hit him with a stick if he made a mistake um, on the when he was copying it down, which, of course, is going to make some mistakes because, you know, if he doesn't know how to write. Now, Muhammad is so excited about this message, going and having this revelation where he says, everyone, look, there's only one God. We need to destroy these statues of the Kaaba because they are idols. We only need to worship one God. And to boot, not only preaching monotheism, he said everybody was equal. It does not matter that Sahil has millions and millions of dollars. He is equal to Campbell, who has negative five dollars it doesn't matter that claire bear has 20 bucks she is equal to sahil and campbell so another thing he said with it is because sahil is so rich he should share his wealth he should give some money to campbell so campbell has everything she needs so that she can have food she can have shelter she can have comfort he said that wealth wasn't as important as leading a good life so this is what Muhammad preaches to the people of Mecca. And we could see, though, that now, if you're super duper rich, do you want to be less rich? Celine shakes her head no. Sahil shakes his head no. And I agree. Yeah. Typically, people, once they accumulate wealth, they want to keep that wealth. So when Muhammad is saying, share that wealth, Emmy, you have $300. Give 150 of that to people in need. And he's like, I don't know about that one. I kind of like my 300 bucks. I could buy a pretty dress or a pony or something. I don't know, whatever Emmy's into these days. So Muhammad preaches one God and that all people are equal. And this is not going to go over well, folks. There is going to be opposition to his preaching. And we'll get to that in one moment since I see so many pencils feverishly writing. Oh, I miss the sound of your pens and pencils on the paper. Ah, the cries of pain that Blake would make from her hand hurting from all of the writing I would do. 
laughing maniacally at Simon as he's downcast. And I mean, <laughs> all right. So opposition to Islam. Now, there are going to be a ton of people who do convert to Islam. Think about it. If you were poor and uh, not treated well, you liked Islam because that meant you would get more wealth and you would be treated better. It's the same thing as when we had um, between Hinduism and Buddhism. You know, when Siddhartha starts preaching Buddhism, folks like the, the Brahmins and the Kshatriya, they were like, ah, we're pretty happy with this social arrangement. But groups like the Sudras and especially the, the Pariah, the outcasts, they're like, no, equality, that's the way to go. And it's similar where those that are <coughs> poor or those related to Muhammad, they convert to Islam. Many of the people in Mecca, though, or Maka, as it was called back then, were wealthy because it was a rich trading town. So they said, nah, this isn't for us. You know, we're going to keep it with the old way with all the different gods and, you know, stuff like that, because that's working out pretty well for us. There's another angle, though. Now, this is one of the times that I super wish we were at school, too, because this is when you would see one of the most finest pieces of art you ever could imagine. And something that students for years to come say, oh, I remember Humpy the Camel. I will do my best to try to go see Emmy smiling because probably Audrey and Kate both probably went to her and shared the amazingness of Humpy the Camel and how great an artist that Mr. Kenny is. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's like Hump, Humpy the Camel drawings like in the Louvre in Paris and like the New York City uh, Art Museum and things like that because this is... This is a true masterpiece. Isha, you have no idea what you're going to get here. It's going to be amazing, darling. So people would make pilgrimages to Mecca. And um, they would go there. And a pilgrimage is a religious journey. And what's going to happen is they would go to the Kaaba to worship their gods. And the idea was they thought if there's only one god to be worshipped, they're going to lose out on money. So let's see if I can make this like a smaller image so that you can keep on writing over there. So, because here's the deal. We have our perfect replica of Sarah. I know, Sarah cannot believe the photorealism that I have here showing her. It even has her pretty long hair. There you are, Sarah. Oh boy. Now, Sarah, she wants to go worship her favorite Arabic god, the god of um, Cheese Whiz, okay? So, does cheese whiz still exist? Is there still spray cheese? That's still a thing? Okay, Celine shakes her head, yes. Cheese whiz, it's delicious. It's probably not really cheese, but it's so yummy. So this is the cheese whiz god statue, which is over by our Kaaba. Okay? Kaaba. Uh, this is so much harder on a computer than with a whiteboard. Anyways. So she wants to go worship the statue of the cheese whiz god. And of course, we have Sahil. He wants to go worship his god of um, his god of large heads because um, his picture has a large head right now. Sorry, Sahil. I'm just a bad artist. And so both of them are going to hop on their camels. So we've got Humpy and Humpet. Oh, yeah. I still got it. Still got it. So they're both going to hop on their camels, and they are going to go to Mecca. Now, here's the thing. Sarah, Sahil, do you guys like to sleep outside? No, Sahil shakes his head no. What about you, Sarah? Well, Sarah does. Great. So Sarah's going to save some money, but Sahil, he wants to go to the Maka Inn. All right? So he goes to the Maka Inn. He's going to go pay money to stay at this hotel. Now... Can you just let your camel humpy roam around through the streets of Mecca? No, you can't let your camel run. So humpy has to go stay at the animal stables. So that's more money. Now, I have a question. Sarah, Sahil, or anybody, do you guys like to eat food sometimes? Uh, humpy the camel is the greatest work of art you've ever seen, Sahil, F minus minus. People like to eat food. So, okay, so they're gonna go to McDonald's here, the golden arches of McDonald's. And guess what? 
Is that food free? No, that's going to cost money. Now, when they go to the Kaaba, guess what? You leave an offering to your god or goddess. So they leave money at the Kaaba. Now, you went all this way to Maka. Aren't you going to go get like an I love Maka t-shirt or something like that? You know, souvenirs. So I love Maka. Oh, yeah. This is great. Uh, well, yeah, because they're not feeding their camel enough. So, oh, yeah, they need to get some camel food. So we got this box of camel food. So that's going to cost more money. All right, there we go. Now we've made the camel beefier. So we see all of these people are going to Maka. They are spending money there. And the worry was if they switch to monotheism, are many people going to come? Because, I mean, maybe Celine would worship, like, the one true God Muhammad was saying. But, like, Charity's like, um, I'm all about my hair goddess. And Blake's like, I love my hair comb god. And Simon's like, I like my um, uh, roast beef god. You know, you know. and, of course, Emmeline has the flying spaghetti monster, which actually Pastafarianism is a real thing. I'm not even kidding. Pastafarianism, look it up. It's kind of kooky. <laughs> so all of these people go and they thought they would lose lots of money not only are they going to lose money but then muhammad is saying hey celine you got some big bucks share your money uh pastafarianism pastafarianism i think that's how it is google it real fast yes i spelt it right i am the man i am so proud see pastafarianism Flying Spaghetti Monster God. <laughs> Told you it was a thing. <laughs> Sometimes you guys don't believe me, but I tell nothing but the truth. Um, except when I'm totally trolling you guys. But, you know, um, this time is not a troll. <laughs> now, here is another thing, too. They thought, if they start listening to this young kid, Muhammad that they are going to lose their authority. That's right, it's classic. Just like how sometimes us old folks like me are like, we can't listen to you kiddos, your crazy ideas. Same kind of idea, same kind of idea. Now, so what happened was people started boycotting Muslims. They started saying, well, we're not gonna do any business with anybody that is working with Muhammad. All right, so they say, we are going to boycott you. So that means they don't go to Muslim-owned shops. So those shops go out of business. All right, let us now stop going on our sidebar. Let's focus on our lesson. I share with you one strange religion called Pasifarianism, and then you all guys get all off task. Sahil's like, I'm still going to look it up. This is fascinating. It's scary, Sahil, okay? <laughs> so boy kind of refuses to do business. And what happened, basically, the people that followed Muhammad they're going to be forced to flee. They're going to be forced to leave because um, they're just no one's letting them buy anything. No one's buying things from them. It's just a terrible situation. It's a real, real bummer. All right. We've got one more slide to go with. So Muhammad is going to have his followers flee to Yatrib. Now, Yashrib is going to be renamed to Medina, which means the city of the prophet, because this is where Muhammad is really going to start his, um, like his ministry in full. So, Muhammad winds up going and being the de facto ruler of Yashrib. People follow him. They look to him to go settle disagreements, to settle disputes. All right. And one of the things that he does uh, is he breaks something that was an Arab tradition. And this is going to be really important because one of the reasons why we talk about Islam is because Islam unites the Arabs together. Because prior to this moment, the Arabs are divided. They're constantly having wars with each other. Tribal disputes 
Like, so for example, one of the things um, was this idea of blood debts and things like that. So if, you know, Jacob, his great, great, great grandfather wound up going and killing um, Simon's great, great, great grandfather, that Simon, like, even though that has nothing to do with Jacob, hates Jacob and his family and wants revenge. And then, of course, Simon's family is going to wind up trying to go kill one of Jacob's family. But then is that make it even and fair? No. Then Jacob's family goes and says, well, now we have to get back at Simon's family. And the, like these generation long blood feuds would happen. So there were constant wars amongst the Arabs. But Muhammad says, no, if you are, yes, exactly like Romeo did. Good job, Miss Lou. Hooray. So if, um, when Muhammad goes and says, well, if you're going to convert to Islam, you need to swear loyalty to God instead of your family. And this is going to change everything because what this does is it unifies the Arabs together. And one of the things that we've seen is this area of the world, it had been conquered by group after group after group after group. But after the Arabs unify, they stop fighting each other. Now it's Arabs creating giant empires and ruling in those lands. It's it's really true where uh, until we have like modern history with colonialism, we are not going to have another group ruling them except their own folks, um, which is pretty amazing. So Muhammad winds up unifying. And what happens is we have a war. So eventually the people of Mecca and the people of Medina go to war. And in the beginning, it is. It looks like there is. It, it's completely unfair because the city of Mecca is rich. It is wealthy. It is the young. It is the powerful. Where the people who followed Muhammad were the poor, the weak, the widows, orphans, people who had nothing. So Mecca had a humongous army, a powerful army with horses and swords and young people fit ready to fight. Muhammad had the old. They, instead of horses, they had like camels and donkeys. You know, instead of swords, they had spears and things like that. Mecca has the numbers. Muhammad did not. Smaller. First battle happens. Somehow, Muhammad's army wins. And people are like, well, that was surprising. Maybe the people of Mecca were just too proud. Maybe they're cocky and overconfident. The next battle happens. Muhammad wins wins again and the different bedouin tribes and different groups saying well this doesn't make any sense god must be on his side and people start joining muhammad's cause and once again muhammad doesn't say swear loyalty to me swear loyalty to my family they say swear loyalty to god and they're like well this is interesting and muhammad's army winds up getting bigger and bigger and eventually they even go and capture mecca now, typically what would happen in this situation, I, by the way, I neglected to say this, but one of the reasons why Muhammad has to leave is because they were going to kill him. Um, they were basically, um, the elders asked Muhammad's family, said, look, Muhammad's causing a lot of problems. Can we kill him, you know, so that they don't start a blood feud? And Muhammad's family said, yes, you can kill him. He's causing problems. So that's why Muhammad left. I know. And he's like, what? His own family? Yeah. Uh, crazy, right? Uh, so... When Muhammad comes back, they are expecting that Muhammad will do what every conqueror does, and that's steal everything that you want, basically not bolt it down, make it your own, and kill everybody who's your enemy and does not make you happy, and like sell the women and children into slavery, like all sorts of terrible, nasty things, which was the common thing. But Muhammad doesn't do that. Muhammad defeats the defenders of Mecca, and he goes, leads a procession right into the city. And they're thinking, oh no, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. He's going to start massacring and killing. He goes right to the Kaaba where all those statues of those gods and goddesses are. And he destroys each and every single one of the idols at the Kaaba. He tears them down. They smash them up. The people of Mecca watch in amazement because they're like, well, isn't he supposed to be like killing us? I mean, they're happy they're not killing them. Trust me. And then Mecca and then Muhammad says, you people are spared. I'm not going to lay a finger on you. This is showing 
you the victory we have is over these false gods. And so that is where we're going to leave our story here. Muhammad has become a fugitive, but then has gone over and taken the city of Mecca back. So I'm going to stop the recording right now. Do we have any questions about our lesson 